Hey everybody, Cole here. And today we're going to do our first transplant and we're going to do some metric tag and labeling. Talk a little bit about some dirt and a little bit of um, uh, what plants need as far as you know stressing and stuff uh, and food. And uh, then I will follow up with a metric video on how to do some tagging and some um, receiving and some stuff like that. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So what I did was I had the plants and they were um, uh, getting big enough and everything in this their little dome and things were getting obviously a little bit too moist. Um, if you notice something that you really don't want to see is, is the, uh, a bunch of moss and stuff like that growing, not only because it's really eating your nutrition up, but it's also expunging a lot of oxygen and stuff and marijuana doesn't need oxygen. You know, it's a plant. Well, it's photosynthesis. Part of its photosynthesis is, you know, releasing oxygen, stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, you'll notice here, let's go ahead and see if we can't spin this around. Very amateur cameraman here. Um, let's see. I don't know, um, but if you'll see, see the discoloration here on the leaves and everything? See that yellowing starting from the outside? That means these little ladies can use some nitrogen. Also, if you'll notice, they're folding upwards like that, making little cups. That means it's too hot and it's too humid. Mostly humid because the leaves themselves aren't getting crispy just yet, but they'll cut off and then they'll die and get crispy, all that blah, blah. So what I did was you don't want to save these seed, seed planters. You want to cut them out. You want to open them up. And then, ooh, yeah, look at that. That's really great. And then you just take your plant out. Oh, don't hit the roots. It's okay if you do. They'll regenerate. They're plants. See that? You don't need to break it up or anything. You just open up a little hole since the soil is very nice and loose. And then we'll put it there and do that. Now I know that I said they need some nitrogen and everything, and, uh, and definitely some phosphorus also because the way that nitrogen's coming in and the way that green's kind of co coordinating there, that means they can also use some phosphorus as well. But instead of feeding them either a little molasses or you know, like I did here, I put dirt in empty cubes and then I let the water saturate that dirt, which will pull the nutrition of from the dirt into the water. And you'll notice that the roots were also springing out upwards and coming into the other. So that's why you only want to do that for a few few days at the most. Um, but just go ahead and transplant them into some new dirt. And um, then uh, they'll just go ahead and start eating the nutrition from that dirt. So you don't have to add anything still just yet. And I'm also going to wait a few days because you'll see that it's starting to get bushy in there and I want them to go up. I'll actually cut and remove and clean all this out to stimulate more growth upwards and everything. But I'm not going to do that just yet because more leaves mean more photosynthesis. More photosynthesis means, you know, the plant's going to keep going. And uh, low flow branches are fine. You can crop them. I'll, I'll show you how to shape your plants and everything um, in future videos and all that. Now, when it comes to your metric tags, um, this is how I like to do it because I think it really helps. Um, I always say, um, write out the name. Now, I know if you're doing a few hundred, you're going to want to do um, some um, abbreviations and stuff. That's cool, but let's say you're, you have like, 30 plants in, in, in your row and everything. I would have at least six of them written out fully. That way you have two that the agent, the inspecting agent can read in total on both ends and one in the middle. So that way you can say, okay, all these are the same and here's the written out. It really helps the agent out. No, seriously, you think marijuana agents sit around and memorize abbreviations and emojis? No. They, they're not going to do that. Also, I put the plant date from the seed there. And I'm also, I forgot to write this, but I'm going to write practice right here. So, so we know that it's there for practice and all that. Um, now, another thing, when you do your tags, and the reason why I'm doing it, I know these are still a little too small to actually really be legally tagged and all that. But um, when you receive clones, clones are typically around this size, from here to there. So when you get your clones, you're going to want to get them out of those congregate um, containers that they'll, they'll come 
So a clone will come like this. It'll come in a container just like this. I'll sell it. You know, when I sell clones, I sell them just like this. And then of course I'll have the Cools Colorado Cannabis tag here. And I always leave this one loose for your record so you can tear it off. Always leave the back on there. Leave that paper on there. Whenever you're doing your buds or any packages that you're leaving, I highly recommend leaving this part of the back taper on there. That way your customer can take it off and stick it in their book for their records. It really helps them out. So please don't make them have to tear or cut plastic and then somehow glue it. But yeah, you'd get it. You'd get it like that and um, you'd receive it and you put, you know, the number and everything. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, but I say go ahead and stick your tags on there because when they become regulation height, we're then going to take this and we're going to attach it to the plant and I'll show you how to do that. Another thing is, is I want to be really, really clear um, that I think will set you up for success is keep your tags clean. Keep your plant tags clean. And I'll tell you why later, but trust me on this. Well, I'll tell you right now because when you harvest your marijuana, you can't immediately put a package tag on it right away um, until it passes its lab exam. So these are not only the plant tags for the plant while it's living, but when it dies, they become your harvest batch tags. And you're going to want to put them in a Ziploc bag and store them with your butt. You have to, you know, they, the inspecting agent is going to say, okay, where did this come from? Oh, okay. Here's the tags that correspond to it. Here's the numbers on the backside that correspond to it and all that. And, um, and you'll also see why I left all that blank space there too, because, um, when I harvest and when these become my harvest batch tags, I like to put the harvest date, um, or H I'll put H and then, and then the, and then the date on there. But I also like to put the individual weight of each and every plant on this tag. So that way you don't have to worry about losing your piece of paper for your records before you make it to the computer and put in your metric. Trust me, you're going to, it's going to be hot. You're going to be tired. You're going to have a few hundred or 50 or 60 giant plants, you know, whatever you're working, um, it's going to be a real, real pain. So it's always good to back up, put your thing in there. And then of course, when you're dead, the agents, they like you to throw your plant tags away. I agree with that. You'll just confuse yourself as you're rocking and rolling from clones to seeds to cells to crop and all that. But for the, but when I harvest, like I said, um, uh, you know, your name, your plant date, and then on there, I'll put the harvest, I'll put an H and then that date. And then I'll put the weight of that individual plant. And then I'll put these in a Ziploc bag so they'll go with the buds, you know, because you'll have, you'll be filling up a few bins and all that. Um, what else? Oh, you'll notice that I only did one and, and that date. Um, you can put the year on there. I'm just trying to save space, but obviously the year will coordinate in your metric and everything. However, if you're rocking year end or something, maybe you could throw on your year date, but for the most, most part, you know, I, 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 once you're up and rolling, you should be turning crops three to four months, no more than four months. If you're rocking indoor, true, real indoor, that's right, an indoor situation where you're playing God. Now, another thing that I like to do is um, I'm going to also show clones and all that. Um, so this one I plan on having as my mother plant to take clones on. So I make sure I put mother on there so I know. Um and then that's pretty much it. I'm going to let these sit for just a couple days. I'm going to let them start to absorb the nitrogen and get their colors back. And then as things progress, I'm going to start cleaning. You'll see I'll clean all these nodes out and everything. I have a rule. Um, personally, I don't like leaves that get dirty. I don't want leaves in dirt. And, you know, that's because these are all little lungs and everything. And so if you've got them with dirt on them or buried in dirt or something like that, um, then... Um, you know, then you got a crippled lung. That's just going to hurt the plant or it's going to have to take time to die and then crawl off and then there and then. So, yeah, anything that will come into contact and get dirty, I clean out. Um, and I do that, you know, just just for so many levels, so many reasons and everything. Now, I want to show you uh, this dirt. Um, and I'm absolutely... And I, and I know it's expensive and you're going to be like, well, why do you do this? Well, listen... I've got, and I'll do a dirt video here soon because I've, I've purchased all the bad dirt companies first, a bag of theirs. That way they can't see me coming with any videos like I'm that popular. But, you know, uh, you know, you need to know that they're the, some of the biggest scams in this industry are people that sell dirt. It is that bad. Now, listen to me. If your dirt doesn't look like this, and I haven't watered, okay, yet, if your dirt 
doesn't look like this, don't buy it. Don't buy it at all. Most of them are filled with mosses, fillers, ugh, wood chips. Oh, even worse, especially if you're in humid climates like Kansas City, New York, Massachusetts. Oh, my goodness. Stay clear, stay clear, stay clear. And make sure you're definitely using number four perlite. Not, not that tiny perlite. Use the big, big, chunky stuff. But see, this, this is dirt. This is what actual dirt looks like. And these are roots, too, um, because uh, whoever I bought, uh, whatever... Uh, place I bought this dirt from it was outside you don't want to store your even though even how no matter how dark the bag is it, the, you know there's still seeds and everything spores molds fungus and seeds there and everything so yeah you know dirt will grow it'll also grow mosses in there you'll want to remove the mosses just like we did there um but yeah look this is actual dirt now this is fox farms happy frog potting soil it's really great stuff for the beginning um Really, I trust it, and I mix it up in the end and later sources with a few other things. I like to build soil amenities and do stuff like that, um, which we'll get into when we do our actual transplant to our um, planters that are going to be for the rest of these plants' lives. But we've got some time for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Ocean Forest and Happy Frog. I mean, seriously, I'm going to try this Mother Earth brand. We're going to crack a bag open. Um, I hear decent things. We'll check it out, but it'll definitely be a mix with my happy frog and, of course, a few other things. Some hydroslates that I had to step up and make. Thank goodness I have the trout farm and I have access to fish waste and shellfish here and shellfish waste. Yeah, we got freshwater mussels. Um, but, yeah, we'll discuss hydroslates and soil building when the time comes. Um, but uh, just to recap here, make sure you put these tags in a position. See, because if I water this, it'll get it wet. So put them in a position where they can be read easily and they can be kept clean. And, and you're going to want to wipe them anyway when you do your harvest. And then like I recommend, um, putting that individual plant laid on that tag, keep the tag with the harvest plant until then you're able to bin up the buds and then you'll keep the tags in a bag and all that to keep, you know, the microbial down. You want to keep these things clean. You want to keep them legible and you want to be res that, you know, that's kind of part of the way of being respectful to your um, inspecting enforcement officer and all that. Yeah, look, see this? Definitely could use some nitrogen. So we're not a moment too soon on the transplanting here. And yeah, definitely very warm. See, they're making little teacups, little teacups, little humid, little warm. So this is good. Make sure you always have air circulating and moving. Make sure you're still keeping them warm. Obviously with the moisture content of the soil, we won't need to really water but I always give them just a little drink, show no hard feelings during the transplant. <clears throat> so what I'll do this week is I will most likely give them a very light feeding and warm water with some molasses. Put the molasses first, then pH it yellow because you're using the yellow um, pH tester kits, I hope. Um, but um, definitely um, nitrogen and some phosphorus and then um, We'll just kind of carry them out uh, until we get to the next stage, and then we'll discuss some soil building, some big transplanting. We'll also discuss some things with bacteria, uh, beneficial bacteria, and things like that. And um, drainage, of course. We're going to talk about whether, you know, um, out here in Colorado, uh, even on some, some places, like if you're doing glass house, greenhouse, and all that, you're going to want to use some cocoa choir. That's actually going to be the most expensive part of the median game in this business is cocoa and can of cocoa. And it's just because we're at such high desert here, it really retains moisture. If you're somewhere like Massachusetts, um, Kansas City, you know, Missouri, if you're uh, Pennsylvania, <clears throat> Ohio, uh, you know, you've got a lot of great moisture content, even all the way into the fall, which actually isn't great. Um, we'll get into that in Bertosis. Um, but you, you want to avoid more cocoa and um, go, go for the perlite. Um, like I said, get the super, super chunky stuff. Number four, big perlite. I'll show you that because I use that even here. Um, drainage and oxygen in your soil is always a good thing. Um, the reason why I'm using plastic is because, you know, this will be easier. These will grow fast and we'll pop them in and out. Um, the canvas foldies, they can just be such a pain. And if, if some plants, obviously, they'll grow faster than others. 
um, and then they'll start to root in those canvas bags. So as long as they're unbleached, I say just plant the canvas bag, but then, you know, you're tearing it, it's annoying. And plus it does something called, it causes a greater chance for human error. So your best bet in the beginning is just use some plastics. I know I'm known for using canvas uh, for obvious reasons, unbleached canvas uh, for obvious reasons. And, and we'll get into that at a later date, but for right now, um, you're going to want something that you can always, when we're done with this, we can clean these, we can sanitize them, we can use them again. These things, you know, they're, they're so single use and to try and save them is actually, um, not a good idea. Um, because you know, this plastic, it's so thin, e even then it's going to start breaking down. So you can see the minerals in the water and the alkali that we're known for here in our water. But I've got tricks and stuff to do that. Remember, alkalinity and pH will shut your plant down. It'll make it stop eating. And uh, and uh, then it could go into a shock and eventually you lose your plant. And we'll talk about that as well in a later date. And some tricks and some things to um, uh, wing that down and everything. Especially on a commercial level. We can build filter boxes and stuff with sand and things. There's lots of tricks and things for that. Um... I also would like to maybe do a video on water for uh, you city folk. Um, I really don't recommend using city water. Um, um, I really recommend just going out and buying bottled water. Um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll even test some bottled waters and everything though and show you what a scam all that stuff is, especially with just pH alone. Um, but your best bet is if you need to water your plants and water your crop, uh, get some distilled water. That's right. The stuff you'd use for your batteries and stuff. Just go get the good old cheap distilled water. That way there's guaranteed nothing's in it. Um, but remember, because nothing's in it, that your plants are going to start craving things like um, calcium and magnesium right away. So it's always prudent to get some CalMag in a bottle. And I have some. I have, I have some right here. Uh, and you'll want to use this once or twice a week. Twice is a lot, really once a week, um, until uh, you, as you as your plants are going on. But um, uh, keep in mind, you know, not all city water. Yeah, it's clean and it's disinfected. But then, you know, are they taking out birth control? Are they taking out, you know, heroin from someone's urine? Are they taking out methamphetamine from someone's urine? Are they taking out aspirin? Are they, you know, not only all that stuff, but then. If you're like where I'm living in our mountain town, they have they uh they just dump so much bromium gas into the pipes that if I shut the pipes off, do some work, and then turn it back on, you can see the gas coming out of the pipes. And I've even set um uh, one of those emergency uh, what is it carbon monoxide detectors, and it'll just set it off. It's crazy. Um, once or twice a year, my wife, like all this, all of her beautiful black skin around her mouth will start bleaching white and everything because of this stuff. It's, you know, you don't want that. That stuff will kill your roots. It'll mess with your plants. Then, you, then what? It's going to leave residues. You're going to end up smoking that. Ugh, no, I want to pass on that. And I'm sure so do you, you know, we want to do this as organic as possible, even though, um, for the commercial purposes, I'm going to show you, um, how, uh, uh, my favorite synthetic newts and everything that I'm going to use, and we're going to use those for the purpose of this video. And with some other plants, I'm going to show you an organic line that I have that works really, really good. So for you individuals, and if you want to do it on a commercial basis for organic, um, it'll take longer, but I'm going to show you I've got a brand that I use, and I like that. And I'm going to talk to you about regenerative soil and um, uh, symbiotic growing, a nice system of symbiosis, not just with bacteria, but we're going to be growing more than just marijuana with our marijuana. And this is going to cover into some future things that uh, President Biden actually has touched on, you know, and, and he's right. You know, people, the reason why this dirt and fox farm and all that is so expensive is because farmers outside of marijuana and everything, you know, we're not recharging our soil properly and we're not doing that. We're just, we're going and going to meet those numbers and to get that food and to do that and or to get those staple crops, you know, um, not just for food. You know, corn is corn is way beyond grown just for food. Um, but uh, I want to um, show you uh, a way of cultivating great cannabis without using any fertilizers. If it well, I'd like to use just a couple, and I'll tell you why when I do it. But practically no fertilizer and everything. There are some methods out there that I've been working on with a friend of mine, and. Um, 
I won't use his name un unless he, you know, I'll talk to him about that and everything, but he's done some, some brilliant, um, some brilliant work with his, uh, hobby grow. And, um, it's really worth touching base on because I think it's part of the way of, of a more sustainable future. And that's, that's really what, what hopefully you want and hopefully the, the kind of grower and, and business that you want to do, I, I hope. I mean, I know at the end of the day, it's all about money, money, money and all that. But, um, you know, if these laws pass to help our environment, and to help our planet, then you're going to want to know this stuff because then it is going to affect your money, money. So why not start now? And, and why not start with the best foot forward? And so I've got some really... Um, some some good ideas to point you in the in the direction that'll get you started with that stuff and believe it or not guys it works it actually works so i know it's crazy growing plants with other plants it's insane but so all right i think we've covered everything we need to cover just for now um don't forget if there's anything i missed which i'm sure there's lots i've missed or whatever um shoot me questions either via facebook at cole Krantz, you can just go ahead and message me right away. I'll respond to you. Or you can go ahead and ask your questions in the comments below. And um, I will get to them as quickly as possible. And um, I don't need a million of one questions or anything to do a video and everything. If I think somebody's asked a question that, that, I, that definitely requires some explanation and everything, I have no problem doing a whole other video just to answer that question and to um, get, you, get you in the right direction where you need to be. So... Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody, at least where I'm at now, is staying warm. It's getting pretty cold. And uh, make sure, you know, your plants are staying warm, of course. Uh, good light, spe low light, soft light spectrum. Airflow. Some warmth. Make sure we keep, keep these numbers. That 46 is a little low, so I'll probably put another heating pad in here. 82 is not too bad for high. 30% moisture is okay. And then uh, we'll give them a few days and we'll do another video of uh, doing our first initial pruning and clipping and cleaning. And uh, we'll also check and see if uh, our leaves go back to green, if we get some, get enough nitrogen in them. If not, then I'll show you what to do in these beginning stages, give them some nitrogen and definitely some phosphorus. And then we'll go from there.